Welcome back to the Casey Adams Show. Today, we have a very special guest, the one and only Dre London. Thank you so much for coming to the show today. Thank you for having me, sir. I, I, I got to give a big shout out to our boy, Colby Tucker. Okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> No, you, you've been someone that not only did I, I meet through Colby initially, but just as an outsider and seeing what you've created in your life through management and obviously with, with Post and what you've done with the tequila brand, I've just always been so inspired. Again, like from the outside, seeing how you move, seeing what you've built. And I'm very excited to dive into the story today. So again, appreciate you so much for being here today. Thank you. Um, the more I find out about you, the more I'm like, wow, wow, wow. I mean, I knew a lot already, but the, the more I've deep dived today, I was like, hold on, we need to save this for the podcast. <laughs> like, it's crazy. All right. I appreciate that a lot. Definitely means a lot. So real, before we dive in, man, you, you're someone that when I look at doing the work I, i've read so many stories of you know you meeting post back in the day from coming from london to the u.s and just grinding like before we dive into all the companies and talent and diamond records and all the crazy stuff that's come from that they like bring us back to like, your, the, the early days of your life you know in london with your family like where did this all begin london uh brixton i mean a couple of people have asked that but not many so it all started um in brixton south london um, maybe I dwell even more deeper than I have. This is a really good question. Um, uh, my mom was pregnant at 15 and had me at 16. Wow. Which I don't really talk about. So like you can imagine at that age, the kind of advice that people were probably giving you that you should, um, maybe not have the kid because you're so young. Wow, man. And, maybe you should and maybe you shouldn't you know and it's it's when i hear it and i know now and i've grown up and i look at the story like that's why i thank her and that's why i'm so grateful and she said i put her back in the day i don't know uh, if they didn't have the big epidural needle or whatever like I, she went through hours and hours of labor and wow. she she always said you was going to be a special kid or a special child or I knew this or I knew that. And, you know, your mom's always the proudest person. So yeah. you, you think about that and it's part of the story. But I never really talk about, like, my mom went through a crazy labor. She was young and had me. And we've been close for years. Wow. And my mother are very close because she's a young mom, as you can probably see. So yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. Wow. So you're, you know, you're born, you don't, you don't obviously know this at the time. Yeah. When did you realize that when you're growing up of, wow, like my mom had me young and having the perspective to appreciate that and, and recognize that? Probably when I was around nine, 10 is when I started to really grasp, okay, my mom was this age when she had, like, you know, you get to 10, 11 before yeah. you get to. In England, we call it secondary school. Over here, you guys call it high school. <clears throat> like, before you get there, you start to understand and start to recognize some of the things that you did. And even though my mom would say, yes, I came to all your football uh, games, soccer, like, if, even yeah. though she'll say I came to, there was a lot of times she couldn't. I had my little sister, this, that, like, she had to work the next day, like, but... I had a great upbringing for the situation that I was in. My mother provided everything she could, but also gave me this um, very deep nurturing of culture and upbringing in a certain way that you probably see today that I don't give her, I've, I give her a lot of credit, but yeah. I don't give her credit on camera or something. You just asked me the right question where it's just like the first person I have to think of when I grew up in Bricks in South London is my mother having me young, yeah. what she's done, people telling her that, oh, he's not going to be this and he's not going to be that. I was a young guy getting into trouble in the hood in Bricks in South London and people thought, your son's going to be locked up, dead or in jail by the time it's this age. And like now she's like the biggest cheerleader because she sees like her son has gone and done something that no one could ever imagine that anyone from Bricks and South like you have to understand the only I'm like of course I know famous people in London 
that have come from there or in music or something like that. But the only person you would probably know that's famous from Brixton, South London is David Bowie. That's it. Wow. I pro- you probably didn't even know Brick- David Bowie was from Brixton, South London. Yeah. But like, didn't. <laughs> other than me. that, I can't tell you anyone else that got out of there. And I'll never forget this story when um, back in the day when we was doing early touring and Post was in Selfridges and we just started understanding what a personal shopper was or a person, I don't know, he did. Yeah. I was just maybe starting to understand. He got it from then. And he would go outside for a cigarette and this personal shopper was like really like asking questions at the corner of the store. Like, and he's like, where are you from? Where are you from? So what? <laughs> How did a guy from South London, Brixton, Angel Town Estate, me a guy like you from Texas, this, this is like a hundred and one thousand, maybe a million to one chance for this to ever happen. Yep. And we explained how opposites attract and how important that is in life and in business. And that was probably to me the first time because we'd gone to London many times and I've, we knew each other for years. But I think that was the first time that Post ever understood like, oh, okay. Mm. This guy has had to grind. Like yeah. I remember us going home in the in the taxi, the UK English taxis, and we, he had like a lot of selfridges bags. He was in the taxi, and he looked out the window or made a joke. Like, can you imagine little Dre growing up on these streets having to like? And I felt like, okay, this is the first time this guy explained it to him, like, and someone else from a different perspective explained like how important it is for opposites to attract. Yeah. and alignment of energy and just how important it is for things to align for it to happen. That's, you're giving me chills just thinking about that. Just, you know, everyone has their own sense of identity with like where they're from, what it means to them. And, you know, a big city, small city, whatever it may be. Correct. It's just like the idea of like looking around and not having like, oh, this is an example. Like, you're, you know, we're here in a big city like LA. You can look around and you see possibility, opportunity, success stories left and right. No, stop. I can't imagine growing up here. Um, hearing that story, you know, I I heard and I was reading, so you met Post Malone at a Grammys after party here in LA. No. Is that right? No. How did you and Post so meet? So I met Post, I came here for the Grammys because, um, I've figured out how I could get myself into the Grammys or get myself around there. And like, shout out to Bobby Greenleaf. Like he, he also one year I had, I'd seen it somewhere one year, someone offered me it together next year. I'm like, I could talk to people who could figure this out. I can just yeah. get myself there. Anyway, this was after I fell out of love with the music business. Cause I love music, but the business, I didn't love it so much within my first six years of being in New York. And I took a trip out to LA to see, I guess, an award show and see, you know, go and see, you know, it was boring. It wasn't even And, that and you're great. living in New York at the time. Yes. And just to it's, give context, you moved to Lon- from London to, to New, New York. York. Yes. How, how old are you at the so time? So I moved from London to New York. It was 2008. Okay. And I moved from London to New York in my late twenties. And I just, I didn't even have a clue. It, it's crazy because the footsteps of the way things work, I didn't know what I wanted to be or who in the music business or in entertainment. I just said, I want to be the biggest. I want to be one of the biggest in music or in entertainment that I'm not on the microphone like I am today. Like I'm not, someone who goes in a booth and makes music, but like I'm someone who can have an influential ear that can change the sound of tomorrow in this world. I really believed it and yeah. I followed through on it, but no where, way did I ever believe that it would have been what it is today. Where does that self-belief come from? If you were to really think on that from an early age. From what we discussed in the beginning, that self-belief comes from like, always having to dust yourself off. Like where I come from, I always had to dust myself off, Casey. Like I had like the amount of things that I've been through where 
something had gone wrong and I had to dust myself off and come back again or something else happened and I have to like, okay, we, today we could call it a speed bump, but like so many different things that happened in my life from growing up from the streets of South London and growing up from nothing and just, you try this little business, you try this little business, you try this little hustle, you try that. And I had to dust myself off so many times that by the time I had to be resilient, I'd seen it. 50, 100 yeah. times, if that makes yeah. sense. So that probably is what gave me the hustle to not not stop and never give up, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, I absolutely. can't, I can't wake up tomorrow without doing 1% better than I did yesterday. Yeah. And this is my 1% today. Like, I want to always give back. I want to, like, I feel like I was here to inspire. I feel like my story I like to tell, I don't like to, but I like to tell people the story when it makes sense that everyone goes through stuff. Everyone has different goals, but if you really look at all of the great people that made it, they all have a certain place that they came from and a certain place they vision going. And no one really believed them in the beginning. No one, yeah. like no one, there has to be some form of a yellow brick road that everyone sees on their own that they have yeah. to take that makes them have this never give up attitude. And absolutely. that's definitely why I feel like I had. Yeah, and absolutely. And, and even, I know we have a, a lot to cover in different topics, but I, I want to say something just to give you your flowers and, and for the people that are watching. No, 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 no. no, it's true, man. Like it's, you know, it's Friday here and, and, in uh, early August, it's 8 p.m., 8.30 at night, and you know, you're coming here on a Friday, and like to the point of like that 1%, like I can't imagine all the different things you could be doing, the meetings you have, the people, you're in L.A., it's for you to show up and take the time to be on the show, and even just to mention like the one, this is my 1% today, like I really want you to know I appreciate that, and it, it shines to your character and how you show up in the world, and I just want to say I appreciate it immensely. Thank you, thank you. It's important to give back because... <clears throat> There's people like that look up to you. There's people that look up to me. There's sorry. There's people that we don't know who's watching. You do know and like you don't know. So just for the people that come up to me sometimes in the street and want to take a picture or people tell me like you've inspired me and you've done this or just your story makes me feel like I can do it. That's who I'm doing it for. Like, that's the reason why I wanted to come here today. That's the yeah. reason why there's someone who's watching this right now who's looking at this interview and thinking, like, I want to be this or I want to be that or I want to have my own brand. How do I break my own brand? I am a brand. How do yeah. I become a brand? There's so many different things. Like yourself, like you was in Virginia. Shout out to Virginia, by the way. Oh, yeah. um, Don Londres is now available in Virginia. And I'm not just trying to do a plug for the sake of doing That's a plug. Cool. This is real. Like, it's hard to get into Virginia. We went through a whole, you have to go through, like, see the board, this, that. Like, it's a controlled state. So well, let's talk about that. Just, they don't just let you in. Yeah. Like, alcohol is a whole different business. And, like, even being able to get into alcohol, I'm very, like, grateful. I'm very... um it's crazy if you know where I like I was explaining to you where I come from and some of the things I've seen to be able to move to America be blessed to make opportunity meet preparation people use this word called luck but I like to say that if you're prepared for the opportunity the thing that people call luck it is and it isn't because I just call it timing and energy. Because yeah. if you're prepared for the for the uh, opportunity and you're meeting in the middle at the same time, there's an energy that comes with that. And that means you're ready and you know how to take it. And there's a lot of people today that they want something, but did you put in the preparation yeah, that meets when the opportunity is there together, you can make it magic. That's what I feel like happened with Pulse. I feel like that's happened with many different things in my life. And I just have to keep taking that plant forward the same as you. Like 
who would have ever known that you doing a podcast all these years ago when no one was really doing podcasts <laughs> for all these years, years later, you've interviewed some of the biggest people in the world today that have shaped the world, that have changed different things. And you had a mindset to make your podcast be the biggest thing in the world. And that's the same hunger that I have. And that's why I respect you when I met you, when I heard a little bit of the story, I'm like, are you crazy? Like, I definitely appreciate want to it. do this. I appreciate because that. Because your energy and we're the same, just coming yeah. from different places. But like I said, Virginia, we just got uh, into Virginia, Don Londres, Tequila, Reposado, and Blanco will be there. It's the smoothest Yeah, we, we, we have some right world. here. So cheers to that. Cheers. Virginia, baby. Yes, Virginia. <laughs> Cheers. And we'll be there soon. And we're around. We're in America. We're in many states. You can go look it up. DonLondres.com. Speaking um, of Don Londres, what led you to launching a tequila <laughs> brand? Bring us to the origin of, you know, you're a busy guy. You're managing posts. You're selling out world tours. When was the idea to say, I'm going to go launch a tequila brand and do this in a way that is just from your own perspective? It's it's kind of crazy because now it's like, oh, never tequila, oh, there's a tequila, no. This started when we was, I think I stopped drinking vodka in like 2017, something like that, 2016. And I had this love for tequila because we'd be on tour and it had an upper, like there was a whole different energy when I would have tequila. And I was starting to discover that there was tequila that you could drink without having to shoot it. Like it was very rare at the time and it wasn't as, I wouldn't say it's popularized now, but like it wasn't a thing that people would understand today. Yeah. And after going on tour and touring the world and selling out arenas across the globe, I always paid attention to different things that was happening. And I realized we was going certain parts and we couldn't get no good tequila. It was, it was bad. Yeah. Like it was bad and some places only had Jose Cuevo or so I don't want to call it any names, but some places had just stuff that was a little more harsher than what you was used to in different mm -hmm. parts of America. And I just always thought about it. And we started working first before even uh, tequila. Me and Paul started working on a wine called Maison 9. Okay. And it's kind of crazy how it happened because it happened during a period where you're touring the world, you're going crazy, everything's going fast, you're touring all these yeah. big arenas globally, tour here, tour there. And then um, you get calls and everyone's telling you like, hey, uh, we have five shows left of our tour across America after touring Europe, selling out crazy shows. And we come back to America, selling out crazy shows. And the last... I think we got to the fifth before the last show heading back towards California where Post was called. was like, Dre, like people are saying this is really bad and I shouldn't be like, I, I think we need to like pull the plug. And you're like, what are you talking about? It was this thing called COVID. It was this thing called, there was something spreading around the news. There was something going yeah. on that everyone knows now. And like, it was like, we're looking, we will look bad if we go and do another yeah. show. And I was like, damn, it was right near the end of the tour. Oh. It was all the way there. And when COVID happened, it gave a time to shut down and do the things that you really wanted to do. And this was one of them. But before that, we had already worked on the wine. Maison 9, the wine. Yeah. And people thought we was crazy when COVID was happening. And we had all this wine that was coming <laughs> over, being shipped over. And I remember like someone making a joke saying like, you might be left with this wine at the, you might have cases like yeah. left on the street corner, like that you, you can't move like this is, and it turned out to be the most beautiful, craziest thing I ever seen. Launched the wine during pandemic, sold out over 50,000 cases, <laughs> website crashed, this, that like wow. things, it was like, there was nothing like that before of, it, of his time and yeah. find people like, who is this guy? Like that went crazy. But at the same time I was in the background already developing this bottle. I was already doing things that I knew would make sense 
in yeah. in in when it's finished and it comes together type of way. And I didn't even have the liquid producer yet. I didn't even have the person in Mexico at the time who was gonna make it. And during the pandemic, when everyone shut down, I went into overdrive. I bought a 3D machine and started designing, shout out to Jacob, started getting some of my geeks in my office, my close friends who are, we work together, we work together at the time or, and started making, shout out to Milo, like started, we was doing, he was doing the numbers and the circumference to how we could design this bottle that had never been made before mm -hmm. and how we, we made it with a free and a 3D printer first. Wow. And I remember sending uh, the Uber to Milo and Milo had the printer first before I even got my own one and sending it back and forth. And then like we got the bottle right. And then from getting the bottle, you hear my English accent, from getting the bottle right. Um, <laughs> we then, um, I got a connect through a crazy story going to Palm Springs, Tiger and crazy story. And the person who took me, he knew the lawyer who was the lawyer for Francisco Gonzalez, who was the first premium maker of tequila. And his great grandfather had made tequila since 1905. And yeah. their whole family history was incredible. And you should Google Francisco Gonzalez and you'll see that he made one of the first ever premium tequilas. And when I got introduced to this guy, I've, flew to Mexico. I didn't get introduced to him. I got introduced to the lawyer. Yeah. Flew to Mexico. This is all during pandemic. Wow. All these you things. Time about, yes, bro. I this. had this time to like, okay, everyone's home. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing yeah. this. And the tour, to like there was no touring, obviously. Things stopped. Your yeah. life stopped. Yeah, I don't want anyone to think like this is, oh, this guy's got tequila today. No, if you're watching this today, this has been going ongoing. We had the Blanco out like nine, ten months ago and like a year ago, maybe just before a year, I've been talking about it for the last two years yeah. because you are your own machine. Yeah. And I didn't, I wasn't jumping on a bandwagon. It's not a celebrity tequila. It's not, I don't want it never, ever. Like, of course, yes, I may have discovered a managed post Malone, but like, that's not what this is about. This is mm -hmm. the taste makers tequila. This is like, a celebration of self-made against all odds. Like this is tequila, like for you, like who was drinking it downstairs, like, wow, this is so good. Like yeah. this is when you know something is really good, you go and you tell someone else and you yeah. tell someone else. And this is like the tequila for winners. It's not your gimmick. It's not glycerin and all these added things that people put yeah. into tequila. It's pure. You wake up the next morning. There's no hangover. Like it's incredible. Women love it. We made it for women first. I don't want to say the bottle is the shape of a woman, but the woman, the bottle insinuates that nice shape yeah. that mixes between that, or maybe you could think it's a vase or a vase, yeah, yeah. depending on where you're coming from. Like, but every there was a lot of detail that went into this, and it's not just some. This is definitely. I'm not a celebrity. People might say that, but. I don't look at myself as that. This is the taste makers tequila. Yeah. I mean, I, I love it. It's, it's a phenomenal product. No, and, it's, and it's hearing that story too. It's, it's so, I, and I, and I appreciate how you said too, where it's like, you know, you're someone that yes, you discovered and managed post, but it's not this, Hey, here's a celebrity and let me just throw a tequila. But you see that a lot with different celebrities, you know, celebrity tequila brand. Let's just throw it up and see what happens. I'm really You're glad. very specific yes. with yeah, how you I'm say that. I'm glad that I made the decision three, four years ago that that wasn't the way yeah. that I was looking at this. That was three, four years ago. Like I just, no. Yeah. And like some people might, I don't really like them post was matter. This guy's on tequila. Oh, here we go. Like, <laughs> No, this has been nurtured. The story behind this with meeting Francisco Gonzalez, a guy that looks like me, a guy like him that made a huge brand yeah. in the past. And then going back and forth to Mexico, it took one year to even get an LOI from this guy to even say, wow. yes, I will make this for you. Yeah. He had to see my passion. If you know the craziest thing about this guy, he wasn't into music. <laughs> so imagine you go to wow. Mexico to go and meet this big guy yeah. who's, make the craziest tequila that everyone has tasted before in the world. And 
it's big, it's huge, and yes, his family and you know they it, they've moved on, and now this was like there was something yeah. that we worked on together. That's why it's called Don Londres because I call him like in in Mexico and you know in Latin America and Spanish, Don means sir, and Londres means London. So when sir at London, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. just the right Don way Andres. to call it Don Londres. Yeah. There was no other name to me that it made sense. And yeah. meeting heritage with the culture that I bring and just the way everything happened, it's it's very genuine and I'll, more of the story is coming out. And it's just like our first interview was crazy. It was Forbes and Forbes was very shocked that I was bringing the family over to the interview i wanted to fly the family out for the interview yeah. and they were saying no one does that yeah like this wow. is really genuine this isn't some yeah, a true partnership yeah, yeah this isn't like just and the the liquid is the best in the world. <laughs> i'm not just saying it like it's the totally. best like in in speaking on again the note of partnership even i, I want to cover a, a lot of things here i know you were talking about earlier um like how you and Post met a little bit. But I, I want you to take us back to not only when you and Post met, but the mindset of a music manager. Because I remember reading in that interview with Forbes, you said you know, you're not you're not just managing their, you know, their brand, you're managing their life. Like this is their life. So bring me back to how you viewed meeting Post, seeing the opportunity, and you know, how did you do all of this? Like, the world wants to know. <laughs> It's crazy because you have to make mistakes in life to be able to move forward and you have to have learned. And I knew that I learned from previous management with a previous artist. And like I said, the hundred times I dusted my shoulder off, like I just knew. And it's hard to explain, but... If you're, if you're focused on really doing something and the other person is really focused on doing something, nothing can stop teamwork. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are or where you come from in the world, nothing stops teamwork. The best teams you ever heard of in the world, you hear of them, whether you hear of them on the news, whether they're good guys, whether they're bad guys, whether they, it doesn't matter. The best teams in the world, you hear of them. Yep. Like everything comes down to teamwork. So really and truly like that's it to me. Like it's the timing, the energy and the teamwork. When two, like I heard someone say this, I don't want to quote the wrong person, but someone said, yo, if you got two free bad motherfuckers, you could take over the world. <laughs> it's just true. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah, what for sure. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If there's two, three bad motherfuckers that really are in sync thinking the same, you can be Elon Musk tomorrow. You could be Jeff Bezos. Like these are the guys that people didn't believe. Mm -hmm. These are the guys that people didn't think or see. Tomorrow, when you see Jeff Bezos, you see the banner with Amazon, the little desk. working people on the like, door. Yeah. The spray paint. Bro, yeah, yeah. Oh, they thought yeah. it was a joke. Yep, selling books. But he saw the vision and he believed in it in the team. He wasn't sitting down and thinking, oh, my life's going to be selling books. Yeah. But of course, that was his entry point. Yeah. And today we know where Amazon is. But yeah. like, I'm just giving you one example of the same thing like it's and of course he put his team together like you you have a team no matter what you do and like i said if a team starts with two or three you can have two or three people together that change the dynamic of what yeah. could be the future look at google yep they could sergey and these guys like totally. you know, give google like I remember seeing old school interviews of Google and people like search engine. <laughs> Today they're in court because people say they have a monopoly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and even if it was today with AI, like you have, I saw this funny report where the same reporter that said like 
this internet thing is a fad was doing a whole write up on like the AI bubble is bursting. The same thing. It was the same reporter, but 20 ish years yeah. ahead. And you know, it's, it's crazy. Like people, the people that the dreamers are the ones that create the future. And I remember when we were together and like stagecoach, I remember you were telling me about a specific podcast you were listening to acquired and just soaking in. I was going to talk about that earlier. But yeah. I was downstairs. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like soaking in that knowledge and, you, and you're someone too, just for context that like there's, we, you know, people may know you as post Malone's manager, but you are not only a purebred entrepreneur, but you have such a vision for what you want to create in life, the opportunities and you know, the things you're telling me downstairs that if you want to get into, whether that's opportunities in real estate or just how you view the world now being at this place in life, how do you view the world today with you know, the opportunities from a business perspective, the, you know, the leverage and the career you've had in music. How do you think about the future of technology, investing and business overall? Well, technology is always moving forward. And I think it's always smart to invest in the right technology. And I was kicking myself because I knew about NVIDIA <laughs> years ago and I wanted to invest and didn't. And I did now, but like I wanted to invest smarter years ago and I didn't. And that's not just one company. There's just a lot of things I've seen. Say that question again. You asked a really good question. Just your viewpoint from you know where you are in life with the opportunities, the you know, the people, the resources. How do you view the future of you know business, of technology, and really just the world overall? Given where you know where you are in your career, I, I think today, I don't want to say the world's scary, but I do want to say it's scary. Like today, it's scary. AI, like someone can take this interview, take my voice, record my voice, make the lips move like you think it's me and send you a message or send a message to my mother or send... So when you ask me what I think, I had to really, in case you didn't get that, I had to get the question twice. That's how good the question is. In case you edit it out, I'm going to make it real for everyone at home. Like I had to hear that question again because it was very good. It's scary. Yes, of course I adapt, I absorb. I would have never been able to have broken a Post Malone if I didn't understand there was... You have to understand, I'm coming from an era when the word streaming didn't exist. There was no word streaming. Yeah. For me, it was a link. I had something that was letters that went together and it created something that had an underline that you could use on the internet or you could use it on your phone. You got to think about that time yeah. back then. So for me... I started to master how I could get this link to as many people. Today, it's called a link. It wasn't a link. It was just, I could copy and paste this to as many people in the, in the world as possible. Yeah. I have the number one artist in the world like I have the number one tequila in the world. I'm not just saying it for the sake of saying it. Like I said, yeah. the tastemaker of, yeah, of course. tomorrow is the guy telling you today. I was running around and I'm making sure that this link went to as many people, but it wasn't called a link, guys. It wasn't. This is the time when, shout out to my guys at Apple. At the time, there was, it wasn't Apple Music, it was iTunes. <laughs> and I remember when we came out with Y Iverson and things was going crazy that I got an email from Apple and it was saying that, I didn't, I'm not going to say I didn't understand the email. I understood it. It was like, we want to make you the featured artist of the month and this, this, that. And it comes with this, comes with that, comes with this. But I didn't understand the difference of what Apple Music and iTunes was at the time, but yeah. they were launching Apple Music and people were calling me from the stores going crazy, telling me that Y Iverson was in the Apple store and people was walking in the Apple store and hearing Y Iverson in 2015. And it was still a part of the smart thing. But like, if I didn't figure out a way to get this particular link 
to many people and it wasn't just that there was many snowball effects like we talked about downstairs there's, a, there's many it takes snowball of so many things and so many right decisions that you have to do at one time to make something work yeah that you got it's a gut it's a gut i can't explain it it's a gut you can't make it up you you can't be you can be taught it you can listen to this but when you feel that gut feeling you have to go and that's it like it, that makes me think to just on you're talking about all these technological changes of streaming and all this stuff but. i feel like i didn't even answer the question enough because <laughs> you asked such a broad question that was so good like it's scary ai but then how could you not be a well, part of uh, or how could you not not understand and be a you either if you don't get yeah, like, it like, I, and you're I gonna get too. gone yeah <laughs> like, yo, yeah yeah it's a yeah, simple but, uh, even, but that's why i had to even make sure that people knowing that watching this interview and me doing this people can go and try and manipulate yeah, especially with ai voices music. and now take my voice and make it into something else that has nothing to do with me yeah like it's it's, you, it's we're living in a scary time but yes, we're also living in a great time of the information age and I don't want to go into it, but you can even see from our election that's going on in America. Yes, I'm yeah. born in England, but like I'm really, I uh, live in America. I've been here since 2008 and I just see so many things from a different perspective than yeah. a lot of people do. And that was your question. How do I treat the world? How do, I just want to keep doing better. I, like I said earlier, I want to keep doing 1% better. I want to be able to keep showing people better. I want to keep spreading love I want to make people better. I want someone watching this to feel better Yeah. the next day that they wake up, that they want to do 1% better than they did yesterday. Yeah, like there's that. just, for me, like when you're like, how can you make a change or how, can, what do you do? How do you look at the world today? I'm trying to do as much as I can for people that have came from nothing. I'm like, yeah. I'd rather like, I know it sounds crazy. And yes, shout out to all those people who came from something too. I respect that. And there's a few people that I've met across the journey that I really respect that have a hunger. It's yeah. on another level that came from parents with money. But I really do this for the no havers, the people who came from nothing, the people who moved from one city to the next to get it. The people who left their parents behind. I left my family in another country. I'm really doing this. You left your family in another state and you're living in on your own and having to sleep on a couch or you're doing something because you're chasing your fucking dream. That's who I'm here for. That's why I'm doing this. That's my inspiration. You ask, what do I think about today? I'm still trying to do things that shapes tomorrow. There's stuff I don't talk about. Like we talked about downstairs, like my real estate portfolio. Like I yeah. go crazy on real estate because I want to do crazy things. Yeah. I have 23 acres in Georgia that I'm going to do something really crazy that we talked about downstairs. Yeah. And this is the first time I've told anyone about it here. But like I do things like that, that no yeah. one really is able to shed light on, or I like to talk about it when it's done. So I will talk about it today. But when it's done, I told you downstairs, like yeah. this is huge it will be on 60 minutes now you can yeah. record this today that what i'm telling you yep. that my brain we'll have to go is, around is, too. yes and my brain is is deep it goes into things that people wouldn't even imagine to think of and like imagine buying acres of land a year a couple of years ago during a pandemic and planning that what you're going to do with it in four or five years and starting all of the permits and doing all of these things that have never been done before and then going on 60 minutes and explaining. I explained this to ASAP Rocky. I told him what I was doing. He's like, oh my God. And I was telling him like, yo, I want you to be the interior designer because he has such a nice taste. Like yeah. I'm not saying, he just has style and the way that he does things. And like people doesn't know as many things that Rocky like yeah. designs. Like he does crazy different things. I've seen stuff I don't want to like. And I'm going to know just to interject. Up, like, like you said something there with ASAP of like, he has this special touch, special eye. When you think about your view on music, what do you think your superpower is in terms of you, know, you biggest artist in the world, like broken so many records and have just done something that people couldn't even imagine? Like, as someone that can reflect now, like, what do you feel like your superpower is and how have you been able to, uh, to do this? I figured it out and I said it earlier, my superpower is to inspire. My superpower is to not give up. 
my superpower is about, what your podcast is about, like not like keep going. Like I feel yeah, like it's my on the super- trophy. Let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> keep going, never like, quit. Keep like it. keep going, never quit. Like I feel like that's my superpower, and even when all the stacks of chips, the the chips and the stacks are against you, don't think that I haven't had it too. Don't think I don't see it even today too. Yeah, other stacks being chipped, the, the chips against you, and just so many people like counting you out or thinking that you can't do the inevitable like it's possible every single day of our life someone is doing something very smart that adds one percent to tomorrow i keep saying it's just one percent guys just be one percent to today or tomorrow if you can't do it today because today's gone and the time you're looking at this is 1% 1% tomorrow I keep doing Like We was talking about Working out downstairs I don't yeah. want to like Start giving out Who's behind the camera And who's doing things And who's not doing things But we, <laughs> we Was talking about I was talking about How I was in Europe though, Like for It's my first vacation I took my wow. first vacation That's In incredible. 10 years Wow like, Well deserved Yeah I took 2014 I met Post I can't tell you I had a vacation Like I've never Had a vacation in 10 years wow i didn't know what the word when people tell me vacation like i would laugh like vacation we travel we go on tour yeah. we go here we go there and to me that was my vacation yeah. we went to australia we we're in australia we had two days off in between yeah. here we had a day off like but that's not really a vacation this was the first time that i ever got to take a reset mm. and this is the first time i've had a conversation even about it on camera or anything but like the reset was really important because you become you grow and everything needs to have the next chapter or the next step where you are as a person where you're growing did you have kids this that like i had a kid post had a kid like we grew up like times moved on so now i need to like make sure that the next chapter that we're everything is correct everyone's doing the right thing like you said what are we doing what's our purpose with all this craziness that i said i mean you don't have to say it's crazy but i you do agree but like there's a lot of crazy stuff happening in the world today so like how can we be smart to work and for me i just want to be able to have the next generation look and say this guy did something it's it's yeah. like it's crazy to know that when you i go just, and i have meetings about don Londres, and i go into gsm that's called general sales meetings like i go into gsms across the country at the distributor shout out to rndc um it's you wouldn't even imagine selling alcohol my first the first some of the first things i walk in and i say when I first go in to a room full of people that don't look like me, I walk in and I'm saying, uh, guys, well, I'm probably the first person you've seen that looks like this today and I'll probably be the last. And like, everyone starts laughing in the room <laughs> oh and like it immediately it just builds the yeah. whole different vibe. And then I start telling them the story about Don Londres and I start, but like I'm doing this, I'm doing things behind the scenes that you would never imagine Yeah, for people that don't look like me, that look like me, that whether you're Latin, whether you're black, whether you're light skin, whether you're white, we all come from different places in, in life. And I've, I don't know, I feel like I've been sent here to break barriers, mm-hmm. to be able to push the boat more in places where I've seen others have had to do it before. And yeah, it's- you it's know. it's so it's it really is so inspiring. Like even just like going back to the beginning of our conversation and hearing, um, you know, not only your upbringing but like dusting yourself off and how you view the world and you know it's it's crazy. And I think people would appreciate uh, this perspective of you know you're someone that you understand brand, you understand marketing. Like someone like Post Malone and someone that you found and that you incubated. Like the world sees him and. Y- everything on such a pedestal of, of greatness as he is, but you know him as, you know, the, 
the kid, the friend that had 600 followers that you met in LA. And it's that the per, the personality and the, the growth that you guys have been on together is instrumental. And I want to touch on that. Like, what is your relationship with Post today? How has it changed throughout the years, throughout the journey? And and where do you feel that people may misunderstand you and Post and, you know, the journey that you guys are on and what you've created? A lot of people misunderstood. Um, today, we're great, like great space, like brothers, like text each other every other day. Like, but now, of course, like we have a team. Yeah. It's not just me and him, a backpack, this, that, I'm a partner, we have a team, we have other people that's involved that work. So it's like, it's easier. Now you tweak this, you tweak that, like, oh, he's doing this, he tweaks this, he tweaks that. It's it's really great. But um, it's like, it's, it, there's nothing that, you've seen or done before that can ever be repeated, if that makes sense. I'm not saying it can't be repeated, but there's just some things that happen in a certain way. And like I said earlier, opposites attract is very insane. People used to laugh in 2015. They looked at me, a black guy with an English accent that comes from London, telling you guys that he's going to be the next biggest thing in the world this guy and then they look at this guy and it's a guy with gold teeth white guy with Alan Iverson braids yep. and the song's called White Iverson and people thought it was a joke like yeah. so people thought first of all you've got this British MF like motherfucker who's like yeah. saying hey this is gonna be the next biggest thing in the world and he's big he's huge he's gonna be the biggest thing in hip hop blah 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 Oh, and he plays a guitar and he sings, yeah. loves country. He comes from this, he comes from that. Bro, now today it sounds normal. Yeah. But back then, it was insane. No one got it. No one understood it. Yeah. Like, and. And I, I, even on that note, and I think this would, I'll be, I want to roll this on the screen. There was a post that I, I wanted to bring up of on your Instagram of you oh, guys wow. playing the basketball. And I, I want to read the caption because I think it's, I, I took a screenshot of it earlier because I remember seeing it when you I posted it exactly. last year. I know, exactly. It was, it was one of those, it was one of those ones that I posted as a flashback or something. Yeah. I remember, I but remember, I, I'm going to read it real quick because I think people would appreciate it. You wrote, both of us came from humble beginnings. Even though we started off in different worlds, the universe brought us together and a lot of people forgot that. Before sold out tours, the diamond records and the crazy life that comes with those things, it was just two people who believed in each other's dreams and there's no one who can rewrite history to change that. And it's you guys playing basketball probably in what, 2014, 2015. And I just even, I get the chills even reading that. When you look back, because I know I want to be respectful of your time today, you look back you know, with posts, but also as an individual, like what, what keeps you going today? You know, some, some people may look at you and say, he's done it all. He's, he's done everything he's ever dreamed of. You're still ambitious, but you know, when you have posts, you know, chart top in with Morgan Wallen and he's still selling out stadiums, what keeps you going today? And just what do you tell your younger self? A lot of the stuff I was saying earlier, but you want to know what I tell my younger self? All of this could be gone tomorrow. What does it even really matter? Like when you break it all down a hundred years from now, who cares? Mm. So why not humble yourself? Why not be humble? Why not take it easy? A hundred years from now, someone's going to own your car. The car might be crushed. It doesn't even exist anymore. The deed doesn't even, the piece of paper that was wrote, writ and that you had that you valued so much doesn't even exist anymore. It's burnt to ashes. Like, unfortunately, like most of us will be. So, that's what makes me be humble today. Understanding 
that this everything I'm doing has to be bigger. And this might sound crazy, but I'm doing it. And what makes me continue to do it is because I need to be that picture on the mantelpiece. I need to, you know, the fireplace picture, mm -hmm. you know, that picture where it was his great grandfather or it was a rough child or it was like, yes, I'm saying it. And I'm, you take whatever the edit you like from it. I'm saying it like it is. I am doing what I'm doing today. And what makes me so humble is because I want to be able to be on the mantelpiece a hundred years from now that did something that made a difference. Shout out to all the people who are not here today that did that. But like, that's what drives me today. I have to do something for the next generation in 50 years from now. Did you have any existence? Why was you here? What did you leave on earth that people learn from? What did you leave that now another generation could do? Like I just said earlier, I was in rooms where there was no one that looked like me moving alcohol and I don't mean someone who's a face of alcohol I'm not talking about these faces and celebs and all this crap no I'm not talking about that I'm talking about like who's on the ground in GSM meetings and yeah. meetings where people do not look like you and they look like oh who's this walking in mm -hmm. uh, okay and then they start hearing the story they're like wow and then they start tasting the liquid they're like wow <laughs> this for me I have to I be humble because I come from humble beginnings, like yeah. I told you in the beginning. And I want you to learn about my story the same way. Like, like I like people that didn't know my story. I like people like watching this today that actually didn't know where I'm coming from, that actually didn't know that in 50 to 100 years, I don't mind being that picture on a mantelpiece, but that picture might just be a picture to you, but it's actually hugely different mm -hmm. because normally today that picture on a mantelpiece is why the family is living the way they're living today. Yeah, And that's why I want to do it. I want to be that picture on a mantelpiece that the family understand why they're living the way they're living today. Mm. Generations later. That's powerful, man. I, I was listening to a, a podcast about Sam Walton and Sheesh. he, there was, there was a lot of great example. No, like similarities. Great like example. If you take his, you know, great grandfather and then you compare it to the, his kids today and just the generational difference of greatness of, of story of like, look what this man did. Bernard's doing it family. today with LVMH. Yeah. Alex, his sons, people I, I respect. Yeah. People that I'm like, these are guys who are doing the same thing today. But if we're not, then what are we doing? And yeah. it doesn't matter where you come from or your background. These are the things that you ask me. Um, these are things yeah. that excite me. When you talk about Sam Walton and you talk about Walmart, and this, there's family generations down. I met, shout out to the, to the Kettle One family. I'll never forget my conversation with the Kettle One family when I was like, wow, you guys did Kettle One. Blah, blah. And she was like, not that I didn't do my research. She was like, no, we're like fifth generation. And I was like, ah, this is the fifth generation still living like this? <laughs> okay. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. And getting into alcohol made me understand that getting into branding full stop, not just alcohol, getting into branding full stop made me understand. I started studying the best brands. I started studying Vandam. Yeah. I started studying the Rothschilds, the Vanderbilt, the, the people who built, the Titans who built America. Shout out to the History Channel, who's yeah. very smart. I've looked into this a million times before that but now there's actually it's not now for years they've had a show that i really love that the toys that built america left uh, yeah you've seen it before yeah. like the uh, titans that built america the men who built america jp morgan yeah. this that like i'm reading i'll show you the book downstairs it's called titan yeah he sent his sons out across the world to go and understand I don't want to put it in the wrong way. They send his sons out to create the banking we have today. Mm -hmm. Whose brain is like, like you have to be on a whole nother level to have a family that you're saying, hey, you're going to go this part of the world. You're going to go here. You're going to go here. You're going to go here. Yeah. And we're going to keep putting this plan together until everyone understands it. Today it's called the banking system. 
I'm just saying, yeah. like, to, today it's called the banking system. Tomorrow it's called AI. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Do you understand? And I never forget the interview. Of the guy, I'm not just keep shouting the company, but the guy who did Nvidia, he said he would never do it again. He said, if yeah. you if you go back, if you go back, would you go back and do it Dang. again? He said, never. If you told me how much embarrassment, heartache, this, that, would I do it again? And I know what he's talking about, and I feel the same. Would you, I feel the same. If I, I would ask you that question, if feel you go same. back and you know, if you found Post Malone today, knowing what you know now, would you go back and do it again today? Yeah, today, probably not. Probably not today. Yeah, because it takes that much grits, yep. grind, hunger, sleepless nights, non-stop. Like, of course, I would do it again, but I'm just saying, in today, like, it's. Yeah, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it again. There's people at home that have to do it that this is their dream and this yeah. is what they want and it doesn't matter whether it's a post malone whether it's a brand whether it's this that like you have no choice so but if you ask me after going through that anyone would tell you but that's not what it's about it's the buzz of doing it the buzz yeah. is the same time you're doing it there's nothing that can ever be explained about the high while you're doing it at the same time and you're finding yourself like because you're finding yourself and you're finding the brand and you're building the yeah. business and you're doing all these things at one time and there's nothing that can be explained about that high. Like, yeah. that's the like process. the biggest, yes, the high of the process. You ask yes. anyone, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, anyone, Elon Musk. Yeah. Like, And it's it, it speaks in, we'll end here shortly, but it speaks volumes when you, you know, you hear the quotes like, you know, Warren Buffett would give everything he has today to be in the exact position you were i am in being 24 being like young healthy and it, it when i hear those things and you, know, you, you hear them on social you read about them and you could, you could read it but to really grasp that concept of like the journey the process like that is the real gold i'm sure you you know the story is like the process of getting the diamond record right like yes. the day of yes. i'm sure it's the best day ever and, and, and but the, the process of getting the there. process for me today is the process with me and even talking about my weight like it was about downstairs like that's the process like i i you forget the process and then just go on vacation or just go somewhere or just have a bad month and you'll start realizing what the process is and it's amazing how working out and the mentality of getting up every day now, like not just now, but I had to come back from having two months off in Europe and just doing what, I don't know, you might call it comfortable, you could call it what it is, but like having two months off in Europe and coming back and having to, to take me three to four, six weeks to get back to what I need to, waking up before the sun getting my mind right, having my own meditation, having my own seconds to myself where I'm breathing in, breathing out, and I'm actually appreciating life, knowing yourself, moving on from that to then doing the most important thing ever is exercise. When you wake up, are you exercising? Are you, are you doing any kind of stimulation for your brain that is on another level? Yeah. Like, I slacked for the first time in a long time where I went to Europe and I wasn't. And it just took me a second to get it back. And I yeah. realized, and I've always known it, but like, it's the same process in life. If you, I, I don't care what size weight you are. I came back, I was 22, 23 pounds over. And I had to look at myself in the mirror and tell myself, and it didn't matter who told me this or who told me that. I now knew I had to go through a process. Mm -hmm. You know how important that was to have to like, and you, it doesn't matter who you are. It's the same process as business. It's the same process as you're down in life. It's the same process. You now need to make an account every single day to get back to, or to get to where you've never seen before. Like I had to now go through Dre, you forgot your own 1%. Yeah. You went away on vacation, you came back and you forgot what was very important. And this goes for, doesn't matter what business or whatever you're doing, 
the workout plan. I don't care whether you're playing tennis or you're playing soccer, football, whether you're playing American football, NFL. I don't care basketball. Like, there's something about waking up in the morning. And, like, I met so many billionaires in the last many years, like, in the last few years or maybe I don't know how many years. Like, and every billionaire I know, they're up before six o'clock. Mm-hmm. Every, have you ever had that conversation with a billionaire before? Oh, for sure. I, I've, and, inter- I've interviewed 12 and, billionaires. Yes, I know. But that's, yeah. I'm saying, have you ever had a conversation? Because I haven't seen that part. Where Have you ever had a conversation where you ask them what time they wake up or anything? It's a good, a, it's a, a really, couple of times. It's a really good question. Yeah. Well, what, have, what has been the, you know, the, the biggest uh, takeaway for you? From those conversations. The biggest takeaway is that like, it's tough because also me coming from the music and entertainment side, people have late nights, they go out and then even going into alcohol and doing what I do with Don Laundra is like, there's late nights, but there's also restaurants where you can go to bed early. But like the biggest thing I've seen ever is the guys who get up before the sun. They're very organized. (laughs) (laughs) They're yeah. very, they have their life in tune. Yeah. They get up before the sun. They know what they want. They like, and you don't get it when you're on the grind because you're trying to, oh, did you hear that? Yeah, crispy, crispy. Did you hear that? <laughs> Ooh. <Ooh-hoo. laughs> Mike's got that one. <laughs> like they get up before the sun. And going back to a piece of a question you asked earlier, just to let you know at home that I'm not, off the Don Laundres, I'm very on point on every single thing. If I could change anything to go back to my 20-odd year old self, I would get up before the sun. Mm. I would get up before the sun. Try getting up before the sun in the morning. You won't yeah. believe it. You won't believe the energy mm-hmm. of thinking first thyself. Because when you're on a plane, they tell you on a plane, even if you're with your own kids on a plane, they tell you to put the mask on first. So that simply means you cannot help someone else if you can't help yourself. So getting up in the morning before the sun is the next level of taking it to the next level is because you're actually thinking of thyself before you can help others when others are awake to be to help them. Like, mm. I can't explain yeah. it. Yeah. It's just yeah. if I had to tell my young self something, it would be get up before the sun and appreciate it and to make as much, make as much progress as you can. You have all these hours to make 1% better than you did yeah. yesterday. And then by the time you look at it throughout the year, someone tried to tell me the math was crazy. It's 1% a day is equals blah, 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 blah. I broke it down. I'm like, guys, listen, at the end of the year, you're going to be 30 odd percent better. They're like, no, but it's 300 and something yeah. in, d- day in a year. No, at the end of the year, you're going to be 30 odd. You could say, no, it's 300%. No, you're not. You're going to be 30 odd percent. This is human life. You're going to be 30 odd percent better. Now imagine for three years, you're doing 1% better a day. Mm-hmm. What your life is looking up. like three years from now for putting in that 1%, just 1% better than you did yesterday. Yeah. That's what I would do if I was 21 years old or I was 15 years yeah. ago, 20 years ago. That's what I would do. I love it. Last question before we wrap up. That is, you know, I know we talked a lot about like what you're excited about and the projects, but just thinking into the future with, you know, with Post, with the other artists you work with, with Don Landres, with the real estate stuff, like what excites you the most? And, you know, what do you look forward to every single day? Wow. It's changed so much over the years. What a great question to wrap up. What do I look forward to every single day? Yeah. Wow. The smile on my daughter's face. Mm. That's real. I've never, like, anyone who knows me knows, like, I've lived party lifestyle of either loca or the this, the that, the this, the that. Like, the energy of your kid looking for you when they wake up in the morning or the 
energy of you walking in the door and your kids seeing that or having that face like that helps me understand my passion even more of why I've got to do some of the things that I told you downstairs that we will come back to talk about. Yeah. Like these are major, big, huge things that I have planned in this world that people think you're crazy. But it's the same people who told me I was crazy when I was discovered a post Malone. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it's, I have to, seeing that just gives me a whole new breathe of energy seeing that look in my face like your kids don't you could be the biggest celeb in the world i don't even care if you're barack obama your kids know who you are now but when your kids are little they don't even know who you are like your kids they just see you as their hero and yeah. that is what i wake up for every day what excites me like now i'm a superhero like now like I thought I was a hero by helping all these people become millionaires that I've done before in my life. I've made so many millionaires. I've done so many things. I used to have this little game I play. Who was a millionaire before you met me? Who was a millionaire after you met me? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many of you could play that game. <laughs> how many of you could say or say or do with that one. Yeah. But like I made so many millionaires. I made so many people happy. I made so many lives change. I've changed so many people's families' lives. and. Wow. When you ask me a question like that, that's what changed mine. Not making people millionaires, all the millionaires I've made, the this, the that. No, mm -hmm. it's waking up or just walking in the door and seeing the energy of the generation that I created here today that I want them to be able to carry the torch tomorrow like the Olympics we just watched. I love that. That's powerful. Well, before we wrap up here, Dre, I just want to say thank you so much thank for you, taking the Casey. time to come on today. It's I, I I could go on for hours with you, man. Like seriously, I cannot wait to do. Uh, I, I got to say, I love doing round twos. I've had one of my favorite authors, Robert Green. Oof, on, Robert uh, Green, the power, he, yes, the man, the power. It, it's it's so great. Shout out to Fifty Cent, also, <laughs> who's the only guy who did the power again. Yeah, the Fifty and not, Law. Don't talk about the the TV series. We're talking about the Fifty Laws of Power. Yeah, people ask me if I read that. If I read The Secret, it's kind of crazy because. I didn't really, I looked at the secret after. I didn't know before. Like okay. there was just certain things that's instilled that I may have learned on the way and for experiences yeah. like the bumper car. Like, you know, you keep bumping yourself like it, cool. like a bumper car. You figure it out after and like yeah. 50 laws of power is definitely something I read. It's genius. Robert. I mean, Green even like that being a sequel of the book and Robert coming on and now me, I've had him on a couple of times. Like, We'll do a round two sometime when we talk about all the stuff we talked about downstairs, which is incredible. And yes, once I can't again, wait. I can't wait to talk about it, but I won't talk about stuff that doesn't like these things that are being worked on. These things that like it, it, it I don't like to. There's people who watch this that are looking for the next best thing, or they haven't figured it out, or they're like, "You're not gonna hear me. You hear me tell you, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you until it's a dream come true." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So before we wrap up, where's the best place for everyone to follow you, to stay connected, to obviously learn more about all the projects and ventures that you have going on? At Dre London. That's at D-R-E-L-O-N-D-O-N, -O -O at Dre London. And just, I mean, Google, look at previous interviews, look yep. at stuff you've seen before, look at, there's like, there's a lot of people who know stuff. And there's like, like I said, I like the people who don't because I like, to absorb like i like the world we're in today this is what makes uh, apart from some of the scary stuff this is the world i like today that we could be here we can have a personal conversation and we don't have to be on television we don't have to be on good morning america yeah. or whatever this is your good morning america yeah. today. this is where you grab your inspiration this is the people that you believe in this is the people that you follow these are the people that resonate with what you do in your world and that's what i do it for today that's what i love about this so like continue yeah. doing what you're doing don't just congratulate me congratulate you and thank you for having me on your show and just keep doing what you do and just keep appreciate keeping it. it as real and keep being you man i appreciate it jay thank you so much thank you